All right, math geeks, get your calculators ready because we're about to find those z-scores. All right, mathletes. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the z-scores that bound the middle 95% of the area under a standard normal curve. So remember, it's standard. So that's telling us mean of zero, standard deviation of one. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this graph. And what you're going to see is that middle area is 0.95. So that middle 95%, right? And we're looking for these two z-scores. All right, so that middle area, 0.95. So make sure you write down everything you know. And we know that these two tails combined is 0 0.05, the complement, 1 minus 0.95. And since these guys are equal, we divide them by 2. And that's how we get the 0 0.025. All right. So what our calculator is going to do is it's going to ask you to give you the left area, this region right here. So that's what we're going to tell our calculator to do. So this is what we do. We're going to hit second vars. All right. So watch us do that second vars. And we're going to go to number three, inverse norm. And what it's going to ask you for is this area. And this area you're going to punch in is going to be this left area. Some of your calculators are smart and they'll give you some options, left, center, or right. And then you could hit center and then type in that area. But for a lot of these calculators, they just want the left area, all right? So we'll talk more about that. And then our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. We're gonna go ahead, press paste. And there is the instructions, right? That we're telling our calculator. And so this Z value is negative 1.96 if we round it, right? And so what that means, if this is negative point, uh, negative 1.96, then on the right hand side, we know this uh, Z score is positive 1.96 because of the symmetry. All right. So again, if you have a negative Z score, the positive is just going to be that positive number. And we don't have to run through this again. If you wanted, you could absolutely, you know, run through this program again if you wanted the calculator to give you this number. But what would you do? Well, let's pay attention. We know that this area to the right was 0 0.025, but notice what your calculator wants. The calculator wants the area to the left. So what you would do is for this area, instead of putting 0 0.025, you would do one minus that, one minus 0 0.025. And that's what you would uh, use right there because what that would represent, let me shade this in for you, that would represent all this area to the left. It would include the 0.95 plus the 0 0.025 right there. So this entire area to the left, right from here, the area from here all the way to the left would be 0.975, right? 97.5% if we turn it to a percent. So again, um, when you're using inverse norm, depending on, you know, the latest version calculator that you have, if you have one like this, you're just going to enter in that left area. Some of you are going to be spoiled and your calculator is going to ask you, Hey, what area do you want to look at? The left area, the middle area and the right area. And then you don't have to make any of these calculations. Okay. So I just wanted to throw that out there and Let's do another example so you could actually see what you would do if your calculator did ask you, you know, which area do you want? So follow me. All right, so let's use this example uh, to see what we were talking about. Okay, so again, in this example, what we're looking at is we wanna find the Z-score. So again, always make sure you understand what is it that you're looking for. So we wanna find the Z-score associated with this right tail and they're telling us the area of this right tail is 0 0.025. So if you're using the more updated calculator uh, that when you go to in norm, right, if it gives you this screen right here, then you're in luck because in this, in this screen, we really don't have to do any thinking. We just punch in the area. We know it's a standard normal curve. So mean of zero, standard deviation of one, 
and we're gonna shade in. We're shading in this right tail, so you just make sure you pick that right option. And so when you hit paste, this is what it's gonna paste. And so in this case, if we hit enter, let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna get one point, so we're gonna get approximately, I should say, 1.96, right? And let's say we're using the other calculator. Maybe you're using the app, um, the Graphing Calc app. So if you were using the Graphing Calc app, you'd go through the same steps, but it doesn't give you this nice screen right here. It wants you manually to enter everything in. So manually, when you're using the app or you one of these older versions, what they want you to do is they want you to enter in the area to the left here. And this area to the left is one minus 0 0.025. And so if I do one minus, right, and we already know this, one minus 0 0.025, then we know we're getting 0 0.975 and of course our mean of zero and our standard deviation of one. And when we plug that in, it's gonna give us the same answer right here for this z-score. So this z-score is approximately 1.96. So either way, when you're using these programs, make sure number one, you know what you're looking for. So in this case, when you're looking for the z-value, you're gonna use inverse norm, all right? You're using that program right there. And like in our other video, when you're looking for the area, that's when you're using the normal CDF, when we have a, a normal curve there. So again, uh, be very careful in all these programs that you're gonna be using because and then you have binomial CDF, binomial PDF. You could get so confused. So the big question is, uh, know what you're dealing with and know what they're asking you for. And that's really gonna help you out. So if you're interested in more videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you, Mathletes, in the next video. Peace.